good, man. That felt really good. If you've never owned before, it looks strange, but your voice syncs up and you have this harmony that is beyond words. You can feel this resonance. Like we just did a set of ohms and literally like breathing, synchronizing our breathing and then ohming together. Like I can feel this like vibration from my diaphragm into my throat, like into my skull. Yeah. And, and like, and I can't tell where my voice ends and yours begins. It's, it's unbelievable. We actually, the three of us and Jordan, who's, uh, he's in Mexico, but he's flying back today. We had this experience where we were oming a, a bunch and two things happen. One, you know what? This is a, a story for another time, but this, we heard a lady's voice inside of the oming and also Biggie, our dog, he started jumping up like a puppy and just freaking out with the ohms. It lit him up. Like when we ohmed in a circle and Biggie was in the middle, he, he like regressed 10 years and yeah, turned into the turned most into playful dog you've ever seen. So for those of us, for those of you joining us, welcome. Hi there, Liz. Hey, Liz. Howdy, ohm. And if you're, if you're joining this video, we wanted to have an open discussion about relationships because this is something that we've been talking about now for hours and yeah. we just, we're so interested in it and the, the dynamics of it. So if you're joining us on this video, please, even if you don't have a question, say hi and tell us where you're at right now. Where are you coming in from? Where are you watching this from? Definitely. Um, if you think somebody's interested in relationships or likes this kind of riff sessions, do us a huge favor, share it, like just engage with us because honestly, it helps a lot. Like I feel more, this is scary. It's scary to go live and to put your soul out there and talk about relationships. Yeah. So it helps when we get feedback. And I was, so, we were talking earlier about how this is kind of like a hangout session. We get to hang out with our friends totally. across the world. So let us know where you're at, how you're feeling. See, Claire gets Claire. it. Claire, hey Claire. Come from coming in from Irvine. Irvine, How are you? wonderful. I see Melissa and Heidi on there as well. Hello, thank you, guys. ladies. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So, thank you, Liz. I've uh, been applying a lot of coconut oil to that. So, absolutely. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do um, for people who are who are maybe watching this after the fact, we're going to put little sections where some of the most powerful moments in this. But this is gonna be literally a Q and A. We're gonna hit on some stories, uh, some radically some honest moments. Some personal stories, right? Some, some personal stories. Oh, this look who it is, it's Lee. Yes. Lee, how's it going? All right. Um, do we have any males yet? We don't. Are there any men here? No. Okay. Just the ladies, That's good. okay? That's well, good. this this may be subtly reinforcing a belief I have, which is that women on average care a lot more about relationship dynamics than men on average. Wow. Is that true? I don't know. But right now, this small sample size of this video is verifying that. Oh, Heidi's gonna share the video. Thank you, Thank Heidi. You. Wow. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Yeah, and keep tossing those likes. Every time I see them, I'm feeling I'm feeling lighter and lighter. Like I can really commit and engage with this video. It's so. fun. Like literally, yeah. everything we're trying to do is fun. <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not be true. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Liz would agree. That's interesting that women on average are more invested in relationship dynamics. Thank you, Heidi. Thank for sharing. you. Thank you, Claire. Yeah. So, okay. This is the question. Are, if women are indeed invested more in relationships or seem to uh, put a greater level of importance on them, why is that? First yeah. off, and where does that come from? Why do you think, uh. Kevin? So when you said that, the first thing, and this is maybe not from my heart, this is from my analytical brain. Claire says, nah, but Claire, we'd love to hear your opinions, by the way, type away. But what I thought of when you said that was evolution and kind of the evolutionary style, which I did study a lot of in my psychology courses at university. Um, some women, thank you for that language upgrade, Liz. Some women, um, I think women evolved and, and work with me here. I'm not. I'm not like pinning evolution as the only mechanism involved here by any means, but women evolve to emotionally invest more in their mates because mm -hmm. women bear the very powerful and creative responsibility of bearing children. Wow. So it behooves them to be very invested and sensitive to the language, emotional and psychological communication of their mate. Absolutely. Well, this gets to something that's very fascinating is that understanding 
that we have knowing our background, knowing our history, knowing the way things evolved, but also seeing where are we trying to go from that, knowing how, how our body works and how we tick, but also knowing that we have this beautiful um, evolution of the soul that kind of climbs higher than maybe our ancient uh, evolutionary things, but to ignore them and act like they don't exist right. is also it's a disservice, not and yeah. you're not really doing anything. So, so, Lee, thanks you for joining us. Lee says she has a question for us. Let her rip. Let her rip, Lee. Um, while you, while that question's coming through, Lee, I actually had while we were talking about kind of evolution and relationships, um, I was reading somewhere in some tantric literature, which we'll talk about tantric later on in the video and tantra in general. But um, it's this idea that when the when uh, a male releases his um, his ejaculation, his, his semen, he should only do that with the intention of bringing a new life into this world. So otherwise, you kind of have multi-orgasms and you, you hold your kind of ejaculation for only when you're trying to bring a, another life into this world, which I thought, what a beautiful thing. What if, what if this, when you have a lover and you have a, a relationship where you're ready to bring a child into this earth, what if every time you had, you made love, your intention was you looked deeply into our eyes and you said, baby, I love you and I want to bring a child into this world while here we go. And like you just went like, Whoa. where did you powerful. read this? I don't remember. Where did somewhere. you read this? Oh my God. I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was in Maxim Max. No, no, I don't read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Claire is saying we're stand up men here. Um, Liz says she thinks that's true for the feminine, but not for all women. It has to be balanced, both partners to be healthy. I think that's definitely true, definitely Liz. Definitely true. Definitely. Um, is anyone ever really ready for what he just described? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a, quite an intense encounter. I, I think in a very grounded relationship where both partners are in their powerful states and they're actually committed to the possibility, then 100%. Like, Not only do I think that... that you'd get to a place where we're ready. I think that it becomes so crystal clear uh, that I think that's why people put so much emphasis on marriage. It's trying to get to this level of like such deep trust and belief in your partner that you're willing to bring a child into this world. And that's why people rush it. That's why people are so, because yeah. it's, it's like this huge thing. But this is where all of the problems come. When you are forcing something like marriage and oh, children, dude. We, we may never it's, be ready for it's that. It's collateral. But... Like, yeah. I mean, Heidi says, is anyone ever really ready? And I, I agree there. Um, it, it is a collateral thing because in a marriage, when you force it, you're not just affecting you and your partner. You're affecting the whole family dynamic. And so this is maybe something that we need to upgrade as a, as a people is how we, we do mateship. And partnership and maybe this is why we're doing this video is because it's so important to look into this stuff and I think we may be I gotta be careful here but we may be the the kind of conscious men I imagine that are you know probing the the territory and pushing the envelope and redefining what it means to be in a conscious partnership because Absolutely. I mean I don't know about you but the way my parents did it didn't really work for me and I don't think it worked for them either I think well I think that you just hit on where where we're kind of trying to go with this whole these videos and this this kind of mystic misfit movement and it's like we are we we want to evolve past the old thought patterns and and Liz just said a comment maybe it's 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 a shortcut to getting closer with God I think powerful making love and powerful relationships healthy ones can absolutely bring you closer to God. I mean, think about that. That moment when you are making love and it is just, you're so connected. Uh, I had never, well, I was gonna tell a story. I'm not gonna tell the story just yet and I wanna be mindful of past relationships to not bring them into this conversation. But just know this, I've had moments before where I felt more love between me and my partner in that moment than I thought you could ever have. So if God is love, Right. Which we had another video kind of about that a, 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 a while ago. But if God is love and relationships, whether that be uh, any kind of a relationship, doesn't matter, male, female, 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 male, we, we don't, it doesn't matter. Just a love relationship, it can be a, a shortcut to God, maybe. 
Maybe. What do you guys think about that? Could that be? Yeah. Could a strong relationship be short to gut to God? Yeah. Is that too much? So Claire has an interesting take here. Collateral damage is epidemic in the suburbs from marriages. Ah. No one holds value to the true meaning of sanctuary and or marriage. Communication is key. Maturity is purity. God leads you in directions we cannot even fathom. Whoa. Well said, Claire. Claire. Dropping bombs. Wow. Um, Ooh. Rebel Andreas, whoa! This is this is uh, from Periscope. Yeah. What's up, brother? This is our this is our most <laughs> this is our good friend right here. Our from Periscope. good homie. Right, Rebel, I love that question. This is man. A, this is a hot question right here. What are our thoughts on masturbation and porn? I, I'll launch right into a rant here because I've I've spent a lot of time reading about this. And anyone who knows about Philip Zimbardo, he's a PhD out of Stanford. He has two powerful TED Talks on this, and we'll link them in the comments yeah, later, actually. Yeah, he did the actually. prison experiment. Yeah, right? he yeah, was yeah. the one who did the prison mm -hmm. experiment. He believes, and I agree with him to a large extent, that pornography is deactivating and destroying a generation of men in both their masculinity and their ability to authentically connect to the feminine. Mm -hmm. Because... It's prioritizing the visual faculty way too much because as we all know, the dude, of course you remember you rebel, you're you're our homie, man. Dude. Rebel is like our was our biggest fan on Periscope last year when we were riffing on these like 45 minute podcasts. Yeah, this is before we didn't even know what we were doing and Rebel got, gave us mad support and we appreciate you, brother. But Love back, you. back can, can right. see, so, I, I kinda I have some thoughts as well, but I want to hear yeah, what you're Yeah, So the the reason why pornography is so potent and its destructive capability is because it prioritizes the visual apparatus but in a, in a loving relationship and when you're making love to a partner it's a full sensory experience that yeah. even transcends the five senses like you're saying you could feel more love in a moment with with a partner than you could in your entire life with anyone including mm -hmm. your parents so it, it's really playing on the dopamine and like the the addictive circuit in our brain and it's also isolation is where you do it. You, know, you Sex and that level of communication and that level of like a conversation, which I might call sex, is a type of very powerful conversation. It's done in communion. Mm -hmm. You don't do this stuff alone. And so porn, I think it, it can be artistic, but it can only be used very consciously and with a lot of care and ideally maybe with a partner. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. So, uh, personally, I have done my very best to completely eliminate porn from my vocabulary. Like, there have been times in the past, thankfully not like in this year, but there have been times in the past that I have slipped up. It's, it's, it was so ingrained in most, like, most people's childhood that this whole kind of, or, or your teen years, this whole thing that porn was like, it's okay, but it's kind of like bad. But when I realized if you just stop and you just witness what 90% of porn is demonstrating, this is not a There's like, nothing love. loving about it. This is it. not love between two people. It's borderline violent. It's, it, 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 first off, it objectifies the shit out of women. And so people might say, what does that even? Objectifying means you create an object out of something. So when you... Uh, you dehumanize it. You dehumanize it. it. And that's why you see these, like, really, really kind of, like... Uh, Borderline psycho. Yeah, says. totally. Yeah. So here's my thing. Uh, to, to answer about that's pornography, I think that it, it teaches men a very skewed uh, sense of what sex is. Mm -hmm. First off, like if you, it's it's not good sex. If you copy what you see in in a porn, like you're gonna be a terrible lover. First off, <laughs> um, and second off, it. It, there's a lot of strength and power, like I said just earlier, in ejaculation. So think about it. If you're masturbating to porn with, and then you ejaculate to this image, there's so much, dare I say, uh, God energy or magical energy. Chi, chi prana, whatever. You're, you're, you're essentially projecting your energy onto something that is not a human being cannot receive or reciprocate the love and you're essentially like dumping out if you're if you're especially as a man if your sexual chi and energy is like a cup of water you're pouring it all out yeah and it's not being recycled it's not being put towards anything useful you're literally just pouring the glass of water out so to, to, to go to the other part of the question though masturbation so I think masturbation and porn, though they seem to be attached, I don't think they have to be the they same should, discussion. I don't think they, should and they, be. they shouldn't be. Yeah. 
Um, and first off, let me just say too, if, if anybody's watching this um, and you are still like like struggling with porn or anything like that, um, don't 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 beat yourself up and don't think that feeling shameful or guilt is going to do anything for you. I would just say, ask yourself, what is it that you get from from it? And see if you can find a different way to get that same. And usually, it's something like this: you have a thought of, of, you have a sexual thought, you get aroused, and you have all this energy, and no one's taught you how to move that energy Ooh. throughout your body. So the only, so you feel compelled to release that energy yep. in the quickest and most secretive, fast way you can. Especially if you don't have a lo like uh, a lover or a girlfriend. Well, you you do this, and so what are you doing? You're getting rid of energy because you don't know how to facilitate it through your body. We're actually in the process of developing some more content, some more courses that instead of feeling the urge to release that um, that energy, we're going to teach you how to facilitate it through your body. And there's yes. a lot of people like Montauk Chia, Multi-Orgasmic Male, Tantric Sex, that can teach you how to how to circulate it. it. How to circulate Ideally, you it. want to circulate it and allow it to energize and sensitize you to life. Yes. This is what you want to do with that kind of energy. And the male sexual energetic system and the female are very different, but also very much the same. Women can also kind of waste their energy, although they don't have a different mechanism, obviously. There is still a way in which both parties can circulate that energy. So Claire just said, men will be men, women will be women. It's healthy. That, that is a, that's an interesting take there, Claire. I, I'm not sure what I think about that in regards to what we've been talking about. Um, I, I want to honestly give a challenge to any men watching this. Heidi's, uh, Heidi, saying, Heidi's asking you to elaborate. I would, I would love for you to elaborate on what you meant by that. Yeah. But I, I, in the meantime, I'd like to give a challenge to all the men watching this. If there's any conscious men that are wanting to step into their more divine self and their God self, if we're always talk about goddesses, right? Well, men are gods, so let's, let's be gods. If you find yourself often using pornography to use your energy or to move your energy, I challenge you to stop watching it for 30 days and do not ejaculate. What will happen to your life? There's so much research on this. There's communities and support groups online. I know personally because in college I had to go through this. You will find that you have unlimited energy. You are suddenly more confident. You have more strength, like physically and mentally. And you're much more likely to go talk to that girl that you saw and were like, man, she's cute. But then you're just like, eh, you know, I'm tired or I got to go home later or whatever. This, this, is, this is a very real challenge you can undertake that will transform your life radically. So I think Claire has actually responded here. Hey, Edwina. Glad you joined. Edwina. I, think I saw Donnie join too, Yeah, I my saw brother. Donnie. What's Thank up? You. If y'all are still on. If anyone's on here and, and you haven't said hi, please say hi. Yeah. Tell us what's happening. Just say what's up. Even if you're not going to stay the whole time, just say right. hi. Give us a high five. Give us some hearts. We yeah. love it. So Claire says... Don't go out to the bar and sleep it off with some borderline psycho. Go home and do some deep breathing. Charge your moonstones and have a good sleep. Okay. Wow. Okay. Cool, Claire. I like that. I like that. She wasn't employing porn. I'll elaborate later. I have popcorn for this right now. Nice. Wow. Okay. Thank you for the comments, Claire. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, should we go? We could... So if someone has a question, like, just fire it. But I think we'll move into what maybe was in the title. Yes. Which is... The first one that comes into my head is using radical honesty in relationships, mm. practicing radical honesty in relationships. Ryan, what happens when you no longer care about what your partner thinks about you and you're willing to speak your truth in a relationship? What happens? Well, I would say, so there's two ways of looking at that, right? One, you could say that maybe that you, you no longer care what they're, and I, I think the, 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 the different approach is that you do care deeply. You care so much mm. that you refuse to lie to that person and you refuse to bullshit your partner because you know what? If you really, really like love somebody, this is the way that I've been living my life. You're going to tell them at the expense of losing them. You're going to be honest with them. Now, it takes, it's an art form. Radical honesty, especially with your partners, it's an art form. But for me, there's no other way to live. I would rather have my especially a, a, a girlfriend or someone I'm dating I let you I want you to just know me straight up from jump you know what what you see is what you get and there's levels of it right you're gonna you're not just gonna drop a bomb the very first date you go on hey here's my whole life story right. hope this is cool no like it's it's you earn the trust so you but if you're in a committed relationship and you guys love each other and you cannot be 
100% radically honest, I, I, there's there's something that probably should be looked at, and it's a bomb that will go off at some point. Yes. It can't be escaped, yes. right? So you're welcome, Rebel. Thank you. Yeah. So. What else we got here? I think I saw my boy Jay Run jump on here. Yeah, right. yeah. J Jeremy Runnels. What's yeah, up, brother? What's up, man? So, um, so Elvira El says hands up to Radical Honesty. Heck De yeah. Definitely. Radical Honesty. Heidi, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Elevated Detachment. Elevated Om Namah detachment. Shivai. Yeah, yeah. My brother Chris just joined. Chris and Cynthia. Awesome. What's up, y'all? So, um, so basically, the idea of Radical Honesty, for those of you that don't know, is artfully and with skill not just saying what's on your mind but with some techniques to communicate what you actually are feeling in the moment to people you care about and especially a, a partner so here i'm gonna practice it right now for you i'm gonna do a demo babe i notice that you came home from work and were short with me I imagine you had a really tough day and you could use a massage. That's a, that's a simple, harmless version of radical honesty. A more intense one might be like, I notice our joint bank account is getting really low. I imagine you've been shopping a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's using things like I notice, I imagine, or when I hear you say this, when you do this, it makes me feel. You make it very much about your experience, but you're very clear and honest about what you're communicating. Mm -hmm. And why, why this can be radical is because how many times in a relationship do you just kind of gloss over these things? Definitely. Like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna upset her. Or, or ladies, you know, I don't, I don't wanna burden him with that, whatever, whatever story you're telling. Or he should just know, how he does he should not just know? know. That's a, yeah. I feel like that could be a classic one. That could be a classic one. So let's see what we got going on here. Claire, honesty is the only policy. Face value transparency is key. Open your minds, open your hearts. Definitely. Exactly. Um, exactly. So an another thing too that I've had this conversation with people before that you 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 express that hey like this is how I try to live my life. People always say, oh of course, yeah of course that's the only way. I'm shocked <laughs> by how many people right. um, just say of course that's how you do it, but don't actually know how to do it. It's a skill form. You have to learn how to be radically honest and. If I'm being if I'm being honest with myself, I haven't got it mastered yet. Uh -oh. I'm still working. CIOs daily. in the house. Yes. Oh, J Mo. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. So, radical honesty. We can talk. We can riff for days. But here's one. Let's do two practices. One thing you can do that I like to do is, when you're first learning this stuff, if if within five minutes something you're thinking about is still in any Ooh, way yeah. on your heart or your mind if after five minutes it hasn't gone away that to me is a signal that i'm not just being ridiculous it's something that i'm experiencing that especially i want to share especially if it's a bodily sensation oh, especially if, if, it's if a you are sensation. feeling it and like you are literally feeling what you might label anxiety excitement or like like a oh, like you, you feel like you can't express yourself that is the signal ladies and gentlemen that you should be, especially if it's lingering like it's such a good factor if I'm still thinking this recurring thought or this recurring sensation or feeling after five minutes this is a big signal you need to communicate it absolutely and so how would they do that in a safe nonviolent way absolutely so I think first off is you can never go wrong with saying I statements I feel this way and if you have a partner that some people don't quite understand, like don't know what you're doing. So maybe explain to them, hey, I've been looking at this. I've been, I want to experiment with this new style. And this is what I've learned. I've learned that when I, can, I can tell you how I feel, we can kind of talk about it. If your partner shoots that down and doesn't encourage you trying new things and new ideas, I think it's time to look at what, what's, what's going down. It could be a very real signal to like, reevaluate the relationship because if, if they are having an issue with you and your experience like babe I felt that you were feeling this or like as long as you're just talking about what you're experiencing that's your experience yeah and so they can they should I ideally honor that at least in some way they might be able to correct you and be like no actually I wasn't angry or wasn't feeling this that's a big one too and here's another thing is that sometimes when you're using these new styles of speech like I noticed that you did this I imagine it was this a lot of people are not going to fully get what you're doing at first, so that's why I say tell a person, hey, I'm kind of like, I'm experimenting with this new idea. Would you be willing to like try it with me? And I think most people will be willing to try it, try things with you and you're learning how to do it. So be gracious with your partner if they have never done this stuff before 
don't expect them to just get it. Oh, he should know. No, like experiment, be loving, and be the teacher. I have a good feeling that if you're watching this video, you're probably the kind of person that dives into these kind of things. You probably want to learn how to better yourself. You probably want to learn how to be radically honest. You probably want to learn about wild stuff like sexual polarity and all that. So it's a good you segue. might be, yeah, and, and hmm. so you might be the partner who leads these kinds of missions, but be gracious with your partner. They might not get it immediately. Totally. This is a practice, right? It's Ryan. a practice. We, we practice this stuff. It does not come easily because we've, we've kind of grown up in a society where you very are kind of wishy-washy with your words and you say things you don't mean, you know? Mm -hmm. Kevin, so, why don't you tell, give a quick uh, overview of sexual polarity? So yeah, we had in the title sexual polarity. So this is, this is an idea that was never taught to me and I had to learn about, but the idea of polarity. So you've heard the idea, or the saying, I should say, um, opposites attract. So the good girl is attracted to the bad boy riding a motorcycle. The, you know, you can think of all the ex examples of this in your life, but essentially, um, polarity is when you are in chemistry. You feel that attraction, you feel that pull towards a romantic partner. And there's a lot of you know, ideas about polarity, and my belief is the way to maintain it is to occupy opposite poles on the masculine feminine spectrum. So on average, men will occupy a masculine polarity and women will occupy women will occupy a feminine polarity, although it can switch. We both have masculine and, energy and feminine energies within all of us. It's not that it's like you're different gendered or anything like that, although some people do identify with different genders. It's more that there's there are different types of energy, like day and night. You've heard of yin and yang. So polarity is so important in relationships because without it, you lose attraction, which is the most obvious one, but actually communication starts to break down. You start not understanding what they mean. You start to get into this weird state of resentment, of confusion. Debating, arguing. Arguing, out trying to out logic each other or like just being messy with the emotions. And what you'll often find is that one or both of you has dropped out of polarity and no longer are you feeling this magnetic situation, right? So for, for the viewers out there that are wondering like, what is this guy talking about? Like masculine, feminine? I'll just give you some qualities of the masculine. The masculine is dedicated to purpose and logic. It's very A to B, straight lines, more objective and more directed. It's more of a, a dynamic or directed energy. The feminine on average, I'll use some words to describe the feminine. The feminine leads from the heart and feels. It is non-linear. It's not A to B, it's more flowing. It's, it's, it's based on the more subtle intuitions and is very sensitive to the environment. Whereas the masculine is a little more sensitive to time constraints. This is a very basic overview, but we've had a lot of people. Uh, yeah, so Claire, thank you for all the awesome comments. Chris, let's see who, uh... Christina. oh, Christina. She was one of our like original like yeah. people, man. Oh, I miss you, Christina. Thank you for that amazing comment. Truth and dare, talk about yourselves and your own relating with women. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, well, so, so we're, we're, we're definitely gonna hit on that. We only have a few minutes left. We were only going to do a 30 minute show. We will, but I'm, I'm going to honor the people that challenged us. We do get you, Christina. That's why we love you, because you're yeah. amazing. And we're going to end with why we pra how we practice for our soulmates. We're going to do it to truth or dare. And then we're going to pick up on this topic again in a few days. This is an infinite it's discussion. It's a huge topic. And there's so much for it. So, okay, what was the truth or dare? Let's see. So Liz, Liz said, truth or dare, talk about yourselves and your own relating with women. Okay. So truth and dare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So why don't you uh, give one example? I'll give one example and then we'll transition to the the final thing, how to practice the for your soulmate. Thought, and then, we'll leave, and then you guys. We'll, we'll leave you guys and we'll get on for another time. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll begin. Truth and dare. A truth is... I find myself often attracted to women who I know or I, or I sense will, for lack of a better word, emasculate me or challenge my masculinity and I am attracted to that. But explain what that means. That means that I like a woman who, <laughs> for whatever reason, like calls out more of my masculine. 
And so it's, it's kind of like the subtle challenge to my masculinity awakens more masculinity. So that's a, that's a truth about my relating style. Definitely. Um, okay, so well, let's do one for me. Um, <clears throat> should I go with a... It's this true. butterfly is just There's a butterfly over, hanging ar stops. around it's us amazing. right now. It's, okay. <laughs> so I'll go with, with a pattern I tend to notice with me. I kind of am attracted to slash find these amazing partners uh, who are the most love-filled women. Like they literally just generate this immense love that is inside of them that I see the way they treat people. I see the way they treat the elderly, homeless people. Those are, are the kind of women that uh, they just seem to be and they sometimes are overly nice too, right? <laughs> Which is something I've been accused of as well. In that same vein, those same women also at times will, within that infinite love, will have very, um, very real withdrawals of that love. And that, that could get into my childhood. There was some moments where love was there, then it wasn't. And I think in a weird way, I, I, I play the game of, oh, you love me a lot, but not if I do this, then you withdraw mm, your love. Testing it. And it's like, um, I'm getting more and more to a place though in my life where if, if, if I don't feel equal love returned, then I'm, I'm releasing the need to have somebody always like me. I'm releasing the chase, if you will. Mm. So that's a, that's a big one for me is, is um, not getting too wrapped up in the chase. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, letting it happen naturally. If you're trying really, really hard, I'm saying this to myself, if I'm trying really, really hard, to me, from now on, that's a sign that, that it's probably not, I'm probably playing on my old wounds, so. Oh, BJ. Thanks, BJ. Thank you, wow. brother. Dude, Good thanks, thanks you, for BJ. being here, man. All right, dude, BJ is awesome. All right. Awesome, cool. dude. So we're going we're gonna to close out here, Ryan, with, yeah. with this idea of, practicing for your soulmate. So you yes. hear this idea that everyone has a soulmate, right? Another person, a partner who you're somehow predestined to be with and like if you find them, you put a ring on it. This is kind of a story that we have in our culture. So Ryan, what what is what is this idea of like we're we're always practicing for our soulmate? What yeah. does that mean? This is something that me and Kevin heard actually at the Genius Network, uh, which is by Joe Polish. It's an incredible event. Um it's this idea, I wish I could remember who told it to us, but it's this idea that that I now use in my life always. If you have started dating somebody and you've decided this is someone I want to try with, I really want to give this a shot, I want to treat them as if I already know they're my soulmate. It's a done deal. I found my soulmate. And even if it turns out that they are not my soulmate, you, I realize a little bit into the relationship, wow. There's actually some very real. This isn't going to work this out. This isn't going to work out for whatever reason. And that's okay. That's okay. But you just either either one of two things happen. Either it actually was your soulmate, and you just increased the the the, the finding it out much quicker. You didn't dance around. Or two, it wasn't your soulmate, and you just practiced for your soulmate. You became better at how to treat your soulmate. So when you find her, it's going to be just like that gonna be like oh baby there you are I've been practicing for you my whole life Whoa! done